see those lights? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم وقوله حق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يظلم الناس ناس شيئا ولكن الناس أنفسهم يظلمون رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري فحل الأغدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Our discussion is about uh, life satisfaction and we have discussed few things about the factors, the reasons because of which our life is not in satisfaction in a general frame. So I would re recap those things which we have discussed and then we will take a step forward for a better understanding of ourselves and others. So the first slide which is about the thinking, feeling, and behavior. That was the first slide which we discussed. We mentioned over here that our behavior is reflection of our thinking. The way we think, the same way we feel, and the same way we behave. So if you see somebody not behaving properly, there must be some problem in his thinking. That is the first step, first rule. So people have this cycle and your behavior affects your thinking again. So if I'm thinking wrong, it will affect my feelings, it will affect my behavior, and again the cycle will start. It's a witch cycle. And then it's very difficult to control because it builds stronger reasons and then it goes on. I will explain inshallah today and next week. But sometimes this law breaks. For example, as I mentioned last week, that somebody likes to eat sweets and they have diabetes or sugar and they get and eat the sweet box to eat. So that person who has diabetes will feel like eating it. Although the mind will say, no, don't eat. It's a poison for you. For those who have diabetes should not take sugar. And this sweet is full of sugar. But the desire, the feeling will say, no, let me take little, not much. Nothing will happen, inshallah. So he will take it. He will not listen to his thought process because the work, the function of the mind is to guide you, is to tell you that this is a danger. And that's it. It's the work of your mind to tell you, to guide you, but decision you have to take. Sometimes we take emotional decisions, sometimes we take logical decisions, and sometimes we take with logic and emotion together a very strong decision. So our behavior is based on, normally, it's based on our thinking, our emotions, and it comes into action. So thinking leads to feeling, feeling leads to behavior. So let's go to the next slide and see the outcome. In next slide, the second slide is comparing. If my thought, if my thinking process is according to the reali reality, my expectations will be real. When my expectations are real, I will be satisfied because things are happening according to the reality. But if my thinking, my understanding is not realistic, my expectation will not be real, so the outcome will be dissatisfaction. I will never be satisfied in my life because my thinking is not right. So major problem which we all have in our life is because of our thinking. Major problem, disease and illness which we have is because of our thinking. If we will think realistically, 
we will have, have right expectations and then we will be satisfied in our life. But in most of the cases, we don't, unfortunately. That's why we are not satisfied in life because the results which we want to come is not coming. The way we expect our relationships to be, it doesn't turn out to be that way. A relationship between me and my spouse, a relationship between me and my children, a relationship between me and my community, my expectations from my community, my expectations from my family members, my expectations from my business, from my work, from my boss. If it's not happening the way I'm expecting, if it's not right, then I will never be satisfied. Sometimes it happened to myself. I think about myself in such a way that I don't fulfill my own expectations. So I'm depressed. I'm sad that why? It's not happening. So if I will think according to the ability, capacity and potential of myself, so my expectations will be real and I will be satisfied in my life. But when it doesn't happen that way, you get disturbed. This was the first and the most important thing. Because in later on, after a few sessions, we will discuss that what are those factors which make us think the way we behave. I'm not discussing those right now. Because how our thinking develops, my behavior. You can, you can see me, you can judge me, and then you can pass a judgment on me. The Sheikh is this type of a person. How you can say that I am this type? Because you have seen me for a couple of years with a certain pattern of life, and you can give a judgment on it. 90% will be right. So how this builds, we will discuss it inshallah after some time when I will cover these areas. That how our behavior develops. What are the factors involved in our behavior? Why people are different? Why they are behaving differently? Why their reactions are different? That we will discuss. So right now, let's go to the next slide and see what are the other factors of dissatisfaction. So the other factor of dissatisfaction is conditions, unnecessary conditions. We have made our life difficult ourselves. We have put conditions, conditions to myself, that I will be happy when I will be rich, when I will be a millionaire. And I'm not becoming a millionaire. So by the time I will become a millionaire, if God wants me to be, otherwise I will be suffering, suffering from that pain. I want to put on weight, but I'm not putting on. I have put a condition that if I will be a strong bodybuilder, then I will be happy. I will feel like a man. So I am not becoming like that. So it means I have to stay in a state of depression or sad that I'm not becoming as healthy as I wanted to. I have started gym, I am weight lifting, but still I'm not putting on weight. So I am putting these conditions. God did not put these conditions. I have put these conditions on myself and I'm into trouble. Same thing is in your personal life, in your family life. You have put conditions to your wife that if you will do this to me, then I will be happy. You are not doing for the last 20 years, I'm asking you to do something and you're not doing it. So I'm not happy. So if I'm not happy with you, I can't give you love. So if I will not give her love, she will not give me what I want. We will never be satisfied in our life because I have put such a condition which is not in her capacity. Maybe it is in my capacity, but not her capacity. Then the problem is my, is my problem. I put those conditions. So if I will put some conditions, she will also put some conditions on me. That if you will give me this, these things which I want from you, you will get what you want. But if you will not give me, I will not let you at ease. That is what we are struggling for a couple of years. Trying to make the ends meet and it's not meeting because we are putting conditions. So sometimes the conditions are not necessary. To make your life easy, we need to cut down those conditions and live realistically, not idealistically. We think very idealistically, which we cannot reach. And we don't plan it also, so that we can see the progress. Because when you progress in your life, that is the motivating force. One of the motiv motivational force is that you're progressing in life. When I don't see any progress in myself, in my family life, then how can I be happy and satisfied? I cannot be. So one of the factor in your personal life, in your family life, in your community life, how is your relationship with others? Is it becoming stronger and stronger? How many people are there to pray for you? 
How many people miss you when you don't come to mosque to pray? How many people like you? If you feel no, the number is decreasing, it's not increasing. It means you are doing something which is hurting people and they don't want you and they don't like you, they don't miss you. But if your presence is such that it is fruitful, it is beneficial, it is helpful, then people would love to be with you, be in your company, will miss you. So we have to see ourselves that sometimes we live in such a way that our edges are sharp. Whoever will touch will get hurt. So we need to carve it in such a way that it smooth, goes smooth, our relationship goes smooth and long-term relationship. So that is we need to know that we should not put those conditions in our life, in our workplace, with our employees, with our staff. If we put such a strict conditions, neither they will be satisfied nor I will be satisfied. Let's go to another slide and see if what is for today. So the third thing is, which is very important, the third thing is the time frame. So the problem which we have, we are not in time frame. Either we are in past or in future. We are not present here. Yes, physically we are here, but mentally we are not here. When we pray, what happens? That's Allahu Akbar and gone. When Ma said, Allahu Akbar, then we are back. Oh, Salah is over. Even in Salah, sometimes we cannot concentrate. We fly here, there, because there is no visa. There is no ticket required. We travel wherever we want. So what happens in our life, in most of the cases, people have problem because they go into their past, past life, losses, incidents, sometimes some damages in life. So they think about the past in which they had bad memories. They stay in bad memories, in losses, in happenings and incidents which they have suffered in life. So they always think about it. So if you will always think about the loss in your life, what you had in the past, will it give you a positive response? No. So when you will think of the losses in the past, you will feel the same way that I'm a loser. I have lost nothing. So there's no motivation. You are becoming demotivated, demoralized, hopeless. So how are you going to behave now? You are going to become an entity that nobody would like to be with you. Because whenever I talk to you, you always tell me loss, hopelessness, no future, no nothing. You know, always everything sad, sad, bad. So what are we creating? Because I am a pessimistic, I am a negative person, I see in my past all the negative things, so negative vibes comes out from you. When these negative vibes will come out, it will affect others. So from 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 34, and then it goes on and on. And after a year, the whole community will be like this. Depressed, sad, negative, because we are creating that environment here. So some people have this problem and they create problem for others because they are in loss. They, they cannot control their thought process. They cannot direct their, their minds. So they always think about negative. Past losses and sadness. They cannot recall positive things. So there are majority of people, they go into their past. Other group, they go into future. They are not here. They are not present. They are concerned about their future. What will happen tomorrow? Situation is very wrong economically. We are, we are in loss. What will happen for in our future? Now they are concerned about future, but in a negative way. My health is not good. What will happen if I go to ICU? Who will come to take care of me? Today's world is like this. Nobody takes care of each other. You know, all the worries about future. All the sad things about future. So when you are in past, you are sad. When you are in future, you are confused, or you are upset, or you are worried about your future. So neither you are happy here, nor you are happy there. And nor you are not in the present time. Even you are sitting here, but you are thinking either about past or about future. And in both the states, you are not happy. So how are you going to be? So wherever you are, you are not there. So the moment you come to the present time and you start counting your blessings which God has given you, you will be in a state of satisfaction. And God wants you to be in the present time. You go to pass, learn lesson, come back. 
make your present time strong learn your mess lesson from past make your present time strong so that your future is secure the beauty of a moment is he has tawakkul ala allah okay he is not worried god is going to take care so why are you worried we have god with us so why we are worried about future if i am doing what is right then why i am worried god is there to take care already he has taken care so much about us so if we start counting the blessings which god has given to us then you will be at ease then you will get satisfaction so let's count what is the biggest nikmat which god has given to you the first nikmat is your religion islam your deen is the biggest gift of god then quran is the second most important blessing which has been given to you the prophets imam so if you start counting it's not going to end now you see yourself you can see you have got eyes you can hear still you can hear good you can walk you can eat you have a house so if you start counting the blessings it will never end it will take years and years and years to count the blessings but we don't count them what we count is what we don't have obviously when you will count those things which you don't have what will happen you will become sad you will become depressed so in today's world the intelligent person in today's world because the definition of an intelligent person is different in different era but in this era the intelligent person is considered a person who faces challenges positively that person is called an intelligent person a person who faces challenges positively not crying on challenges if you will cry on challenges you will keep cry crying throughout the year throughout your life so if you will face the challenges positively you will overcome the challenges because god is there with you sometimes we forget we think everything we have to do so what happens it becomes too much burden on ourselves we think we have to solve all the problems <laughs> no it's not the case god is going to solve your problems we have to trust god and we have to go forward move forward last session i finished up at this point i want to explain this point and then end up here i said do you have problem in life or you have problems with life if you have problems in life there is a solution to it but if you have problem with life then god bless you this is what i said so i will change the last statement if you have problems with life you have to change your perspective of life if you will not change your perspective of life you will never be satisfied in your life wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh please say salawat اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم إني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية 
وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشياعهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبة ولعن الله ابن مرجانة ولعن الله عمر بن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بي بي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فاسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك فأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونصب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبروا إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانه وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فاسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قد صدق في الدنيا والآخرة واسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثهري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم واسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبته مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا يا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بنو أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد ابن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين 
وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي وبالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة نبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العان أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العان اللهم لعن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم الثانية والثالثة والرابع اللهم لعن يزيد خامسا ولعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانة وعمر بن سعد وشمرا وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة سجدة اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة